The race for 2020 is on. The wide range of potential candidates includes several members of Congress, a billionaire former Starbucks CEO, and our next guest, who is the one with the largest social media following of any declared candidate so far. Marianne Williamson, Democratic candidate for president, best-selling author, and activist. Marianne, thank you so much for being with us. You are well known to millions of people who have read your books, including A Return to Love, but some people who follow politics closely might not have seen you. So I want them to get familiar with where you're coming from politically. You have said, we have a problem with the psychological fabric of our country as a low level emotional civil war has begun in too many ways to rip us apart. In order to deal with that, we must address it on the level of our internal being. That's on your campaign website. So how exactly does a president address this? We need a moral and a spiritual awakening in this country, and nothing short of that is adequate to really fundamentally uh, change the patterns of our political dysfunction. There are many things we need to discuss, many things we need to name. We have an economic, an amoral economic system. We need to discuss this. We have millions of American children who are living in chronic despair and trauma. We need to discuss this. We have uh, systemic racism, layers of systemic racism that are actually lay layovers, leftovers from slavery. We need to discuss this. And while we're good at preparing for war, we do not mm. wage peace on the levels we need to. We need to discuss this. You know, Frank, Franklin Roosevelt said that the administrative aspects of being president were secondary. What really matters, he says, is moral leadership. We need someone to articulate what's really happening, the deeper levels of our moral dysfunction. I have had a 35-year career in naming and transforming those dynamics, and I think that that's my qualification for the presidency at this uh, time. Your campaign has a number of proposals already out there listed on your website, some very specific. You call for universal health care, Medicare for all. Permanent, uh, make permanent the middle class tax cut, provide free higher education, including free tuition for public mm -hmm. colleges, <clears throat> introduce government support for children's services, establish a Green New Deal. Uh, all of these, in some cases, sound uh, like many of the policies for the progressive wing of the Democratic Party. Do you feel it's necessary to come up with a way to pay for these all? Well, that's such a canard in this country. Anytime somebody wants to have a $2 trillion tax cut mm -hmm. where you give 83 cents of a dollar to the richest mm -hmm. among us, nobody's supposed to ask, how are you going to pay for that? Anytime somebody wants to have a $2 trillion war that, that turns out mm -hmm. to be the biggest uh, foreign policy blunder in our history, nobody's supposed to ask, how are you going to pay for that? The truth of the matter is every dollar that we invest in education is money we are investing in our economy. Every, if you really want a vibrant economic mm -hmm. system 10 years from now, 20 years from now. You take care of your children today. Our current economic system does not lead to a vibrant economy. It leeches when you have short-term profit maximization for huge corporations as your bottom line. You're allowing market forces to replace democracy as your organizing principle for your society. You're not building a strong economy. And we need to name that, see that for what mm -hmm. it is. It is propaganda that serves a veiled aristocratic system. We want, mm -hmm. of course, a vibrant economy in the United mm -hmm. States. What you do is unleash the creativity and the productivity of the American people. You know, it's interesting. Again, some of these policies, not too dissimilar to what Bernie <coughs> Sanders ran on four years ago, and you supported him in the Democratic primary Absolutely. four years ago. Why haven't you waited to see if he jumps in before declaring your own candidacy? I certainly agree with many of the things that Bernie Sanders says, many of the things that, that uh, Elizabeth Warren says. I'm simply having a more expanded mm -hmm. conversation. It's like an integrative model of health and healing. You need more than external remedies. You also have to address the psychological and emotional and spiritual issues that both cause disease and help to ameliorate it when it occurs. We need an integrative mm -hmm. model of politics. The political conversation we have now is so stuck on the externals, but that that is that is inadequate. Adequate. We need to talk about the larger panoply of what is actually happening. Otherwise, you do what our political system mm -hmm. does. You water the leaves of our democracy, but you're not watering the roots. And that's what I'm introducing, a conversation that I feel is the only one that is adequate to navigating and transforming. I, it is that what you would our do as president? <clears throat> is the conversation what you're promising as president? Well, first of all, 
Well, first of all, the bully pulpit of the presidency is not to be undervalued. Mm -hmm. But even more importantly, it is the consciousness of the president that then drives his or her policy decisions, both in our uh, domestic mm -hmm. policies and in our international policies, where there are underlying ways in which we are not addressing mm -hmm. our deeper humanitarian values and our deeper democratic values. Our democracy and our capitalism mm -hmm. has swerved off course from an ethical right. center. Let and I believe, yes, it is the mm -hmm. job of the president to name this. And, and again, we just have a short time, and you do have specific proposals and policies, and I'd like to get to a couple more of them right now. You are a candidate who believes that African Americans should receive reparations for slavery, specifically $100 billion paid out in a 10-year annual installment of $10 billion. <coughs> Is this symbolic, or do you think this money goes to some practical purpose? This is not symbolic mm -hmm. at all. At the end of the Civil War, General Tecumseh Sherman promised to every formerly enslaved person 40 acres and a mule. And those 40 acres and a mule would have given a formerly enslaved population an opportunity to reintegrate, to integrate into free society. What happened instead, of course, was black code laws were passed in the American South, which ensured subpar uh, social and political mm -hmm. and economic opportunities for the former uh, slave population. This was not addressed for a hundred years until the Civil Rights Movement. And while the Civil Rights Movement gave Voting Rights Act, although mm -hmm. that has been chipped away uh, since 2013, and gave a lot of political uh, opportunities that had not been there for the hundred years previous, it did not address mm -hmm. the fact that we have not yet paid that debt. Germany has paid $89 billion in reparations to Jewish organizations since World War II, and Ronald Reagan signed the American Civil Liberties Act, by which we paid every surviving member who had been interned during the, during the World War II in the Japanese internment camps $22,000. Right. I believe $100 billion okay. given to a council that would apply these, this money mm -hmm. to economic projects and educational projects of renewal for that population is simply a debt to be paid. And you, uh, until we pay it, we will deal with these issues. You, you are not a novice to politics. You've been a political activist for years. You also ran for Congress, people don't know this, in California <coughs> in 2014. What do you see as your path to victory here for the Democratic nomination? Do you think you can win? First of all, Donald Trump is president. So this idea of predicting mm. who can win, we should throw Fair. all of that out the window. My strategy is not strategy. My strategy is that I seek to speak as deeply, articulately, and passionately as I can what I see to be the deeper truths confronting our nation, challenging our nation to live up to them. I'm speaking from the depth of myself to the depth of the American in all of us. This is not strategy. The, st the whole strategic mind is part of the corruption of the political system. I'm not trying to figure out what to say to get people to vote for me. I'm seeking to have the conversation that I believe we need to be having. These are very serious times. We need to be very serious deep thinkers. I'm not trying to get shallow or superficial so people will hear me. I'm inviting the American people to get deep with me. It's time for that in order to address these times and to transform them. Well, Marianne Williamson, we appreciate you coming on and having the conversation here. You're in Iowa today in Des Moines. You're headed to South Carolina. I know this is a real campaign. Again, you've got a campaign manager. There's a website here with a lot of policies. We look forward to speaking to you again as the campaign season continues. Thank you. I appreciate your having me on. All right. Erica?